Hey everybody, come on in. Come on in, come on in. I'm so glad you guys found my other YouTube channel because as I said before, um, I for some reason cannot go live on my other channel um, right now. <laughs> so for the meantime, Tanya's Primetime TV Reviews is over here on my other channel which is called Tanya Knows No Limit. So please make sure you get the word out. I've been making posts um, on my other channel because I can upload videos. I just can't go live over there. So, and actually I did upload a video about five minutes ago. So that's why I'm running a little behind in time because I was trying to give people um, time to come over here for my live review of Empire. So again, I'm glad some of you guys have already found a new channel. Um, make sure you guys spread the word, please. Thank you very much. Just All you got to do is just share the video and share it on uh, your YouTube, your Twitter, you know, whatever social media sites you use. And I really appreciate that. But how is everybody doing? I hope everybody has been well and doing okay. I know um, I had just heard a few hours ago that, um, what's her name? Uh... Kim Porter, you know, uh, Sean Puff Daddy Combs, uh, or, or AKA P Diddy, uh, his uh, baby's mother, you know, ex-wife, she died today. I think I read somewhere where, because I haven't read the whole, um, whole article or any of the entire blogs or tabloids. I haven't read anything. I just seen bits and pieces uh, from people on YouTube posting different videos, but um, she was 47. She passed away today. And I just want to send my condolences out to P. Diddy um, and his family, his children. Um, I think this was nothing that they expected. I think I saw where she was suffering from, they said, like flu-like symptoms, I believe. Again, I haven't read an article or listened to an entire video on the matter yet, but I think that's what I picked up from just seeing bits and pieces. So I just want to send my condolences out on that. Um, probably later tonight or tomorrow, I'll do some more investigating and figure out everything that's going on. And we'll we'll speak about that, you know, later. But again, I just want to send condolences to uh, P. Diddy and his children and their family and her family. And so, uh that was just so unexpected. I mean, like, really unexpected. She was a model. She was a mom. She was an actress. So, so expected. So expected. Unexpected. That's what I meant to say. Unexpected. But, um, yes, come on in, you guys. Let's get started on this Empire Review. What did you guys think about the uh, last episode? Like, there was some scenes in there that just shocked me to pieces. I was like, ooh, slap me with a feather. I couldn't believe some of the stuff I was witnessing yesterday. But this was a really good episode. I think by far, probably the best episode so far, you know, in the season. And I think we have two more. I think two more episodes left, so... We're getting closer and closer to finding out who's in that casket, y'all. But anywho, let's start from the top. Start from the top. Um, At the beginning of the show, you know, we started off with Giselle. Um, her and the ladies from TBD, they finally, you know, basically got fed up with Kingsley. You know, Jeff Kingsley, who's running Empire right now. And convinced Lucius to work together with um, them, you know, on the TBD project. Because one, it seemed like one song after the other, you know, whatever they presented to Kingsley, he just wasn't feeling it. He wasn't liking it. He thought it was not a right sound. Or, you know, he just kept kept shutting them down back to back, song to song. And so, anywho, you know, after he kept scrapping all of their songs they were coming up with, they was like, you know what? We got something for this. <laughs> we got something for you, Jeff. So anyway, they rolled up on Lucius and presented the idea to him. You know, him helped them record, you know, or, you know, finish that project. And I thought all the songs, like I said before, I love um, me some female R&B groups, especially if they're really good. Uh, Tisha Campbell. She can sing. She can really sing, like real life sing. You know, she recorded albums back in the day, you know, and sung on uh different TV shows and 
But she can really sing. And the other two ladies, I thought all them songs was fire. But anyway, Kingsley, you know, I was beginning to think that it just wasn't his ear or him just being like deaf to good music or having no taste in music. It just seemed like he was just, you know, throwing daggers at Lucius and just trying to, you know, piss them off because of the fact that they weren't coming up with the right tune. So he says, but anywho, you would think that he would be trying to make money off these ladies, but we later find out that it's not all about the money with Jeff, not at all. <laughs> and then, um, Hakeem, uh, now last episode, Hakeem, um, his baby mother and Blake, you know, they had an incident where Hakeem had wrote a song or a rap, rap song and he had gave it to Blake, but he told him don't record it. That's all I ask is you not to record it. Anywho, um, Hakeem's baby mother found out about it. She heard it. They went ahead and recorded it, and she put it out there on social media. So Hakeem was mad. They got into a fist fight. Hakeem put a disc tape out. Uh, Blake, he, you know, came back at him, you know, on a disc track. And so Hakeem and his baby mom, you know, they had went to the park. Uh, you know, with the children, you know, trying to spend some quality time because they ain't really been, you know, seeing eye to eye lately. And she tells him, you know, you went a little too far. You shouldn't have done that. And I think, you know, he agrees because after Blake hit him with a diss track, we saw later where Hakeem was like, you know what? It shouldn't have happened in the first place. I'm not going to keep going back and forth with him on social media, so I'm just going to end it. But then, you know, she mentioned that she wanted to take, wanted Hakeem to take the children, you know, for, you know, overnight. But for some reason, I don't know why. Y'all let me know if y'all felt the same way. Some reason, I just felt like, you know, from her demeanor that she's not getting them kids back that night. I don't know what it was, but it just seemed like she was getting frustrated and like she really needed a break. So I think, you know, Hakeem is probably going to have them kids for a few days longer than what we thought or what we, you know, see her saying. But anyway, we shall see. Um, Jamal. Jamal and his uh, boyfriend, okay, not boyfriends anymore. They are now engaged. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you know, they had both proposed to each other because Jamal had initially bought a ring, you know, to give to Kai. And then Kai got kidnapped, you know, when he was reporting overseas in a different country. And when he got back after he got rescued or whatnot, and came back to Jamal, then Jamal realized, you know, he was going to propose to him too. They both, you know, pulling out rings, you know, left and right, like they had the same idea in mind. So anywho, now they are fiancés. So um, Cookie, uh, she doesn't know yet. She doesn't know yet. It seems like everybody else knows that he's engaged, um, but Cookie doesn't know yet. And so while they up there chilling, you know, at home, I think they were cooking breakfast, if I remember correctly. But anyway, <laughs> uh, this um, lady named Winter, she just popped up unexpectedly, drops by, you know, on his doorstep and... Just comes in the room like a winter storm. She just runs up in there looking all sparkly and fluffy and things. <laughs> um, she's actually one of his artists. Because I, I was like, who is this? Who is this girl up here? All this glitter and all this, you know, fur or whatever, meat, whatever she had on. But anywho, um, she's actually one of his artists on his label. And I guess she done hunted him down because, you know, they were staying overseas. Uh, I think it was London. And Jamal had came home because his brother, Dre, was being released from prison. But then Cookie needed him to stay around, you know, so they can get to work on their uh, company and get their company off the ground. So, anywho, um, I guess he has a few clients or a few talent artists that are still overseas. So, anyway, she came to hunt him down. And <laughs> I guess, obviously, it's really important to her. Either she's being really impatient or she's being extremely anxious because she came to him because she wants him to help her finish her album. Um, again, she just showed up on his doorstep uh, without informing him, you know, that she was coming. And she didn't even make sleeping arrangements. She's looking around the house like, where am I going to sleep? Where's my room? 
<laughs> I was like, hold up. <laughs> she didn't even get a hotel. I mean, she just walked up in there. I didn't see no bags, no luggages, no nothing like that. I'm assuming she probably called an Uber and it was probably sitting outside with all her luggages in there. But anyway, I would have been like, okay, I get the fact that you want me to work on your music. But as far as you stand up in my home, that's an artist. <laughs> you can't just let every artist stay up in your home, especially when they didn't make any previous relate in, you know, previous uh then call you or hit you up. <laughs> I'm like, she just popped up out the blue. I would have been like, uh, my casa is not su casa. Um, I can direct you to the nearest hotel, the nearest motel, Ramada Inn, Red Lion. <laughs> comfort in <laughs> any of the ears just pick one but you ain't staying here <laughs> but anyway i think he did end up allowing her to stay at the house but uh when cookie and jeff i got a piece of hair on my lip when cookie and jeff you know were having discussions about uh i'm sorry cookie and lucius they were discussing jeff you know his decisions not to um go with the songs that they kept coming up with. They was trying to figure all that out. Giselle was over there, you know, trying her best to convince Jeff to work with, you know, Lucius and Cookie. And Lucius even gave Jeff this big old spiel, this big old speech, you know, about how he can work with the ladies and just give him, you know, a little bit of time. He promises, you know, it's going to pay off. It's going to work it, it's going to pay off in the end and it's going to work. But um Jeff when he was looking at Lucius, when he was talking to him, the whole episode, I kept saying in my head, like, <laughs> is Lucius losing his touch? Because the way Jeff was staring at him, like, if Lucius could kill, Lucius would have been 187 on the spot. Like, on the spot. But finally, you know, Jeff caved in and he was like, agreed to Lucius's, you know, proposition. But, um, Giselle... She was working um, everything out into her favor, mainly, because she knows that Lucius and Cookie is going to do everything they can to make sure, you know, TBD. Oh, yeah. By the way, for those of you who don't know what that means, that's the three black divas. It's a, uh, it's a female R&B group on the show of Empire. So when I say TBD, that's what I mean. Three black divas. <laughs> <laughs> and Tisha Martin Campbell is one of the uh, members of that. So anyway, um, I guess she was thinking, you know, Lucius and Cookie, they want to get their foot back into Empire. Uh, I don't know if they really want to take try to take over Empire again since they're starting a new company all over again from the bottom up. But anywho, you know, they're trying to get in good with Jeff. So this is like a win-win situation. Um, but Giselle, she's solely looking out for her. And when she was talking to Becky, Becky was like, how are you going to exploit those women like that? Because she knows that if Lucius and Cookie work with these ladies, they're, they're going to get that CD, the album, everything going to be popping. They're going to make a lot of money. The girl's going to be lit, you know, worldwide touring and all that. Um, and she's just going to sit back and reap the benefits because she's not doing anything. Um, Jeff, everything that she tried to accomplish with the ladies, he kept trashing it. Nope. Don't like that song. Nope. Don't like that song. Nope. Not the right sound. So she figured, you know what, if Lucius can get it done, she'll still be sitting good. She'll still be sitting good. So we're going to see how that works out. But anyway, uh, Becky gave her a warning. She sure did. Becky saw where she was coming from. Becky saw right through her. And she was like, need I remind you? She shouldn't have had to remind her. But anyway, she was like, need I remind you that the last person who tried to um, turn on Lucius and Cookie or tried to burn them, tried to hurt them, tried to cross them. Um, I do believe her name is Boo Boo Kitty. <laughs> I do believe her name is Boo Boo Kitty. You know, the one that uh, somehow stumbled over the banister um, and fell and crashed through a glass table. That Boo Boo Kitty. <laughs> but anyway, you know, she was dead on the scene, dead on the scene. But she's like, do I look like Boo Boo Kitty? I am not Boo Boo Kitty. I am Giselle. <laughs> but anyway, she better be careful. She better watch her steps because we still don't know who that funeral casket is for. 
And it's sitting there looking real pretty at the funeral home, still waiting on a body. So she better be careful. Which leads me to, before we even proceed any further in this review, who do y'all now think is in the casket? Do y'all still feel the same way about who y'all chose? Because me, i am kind of changed my mind a little bit. A little bit. First, I said it's probably either Jeff Kingsley. Um, then I said it might be Lucia's mom because, you know, she's old. She's up there. See, not, not see now, uh, losing her memory. Uh, what do you call it? Dementia. Um, I guess they kind of along the same line, but not quite. Uh, <laughs> but you know, I'm like, maybe it's one of them too. Some people said it's cookie. Some people were saying it was Dre. Some people, Jamal, some, you know, so anywho, y'all let me know if y'all still, Believe it's the same people you said before or if you change your mind. So let me know. Make sure you put it in the chats. And hey, everybody on Instagram, y'all on YouTube, make sure you also follow me on Instagram at Tanya Primetime TV. Y'all on Instagram, I have two YouTube channels right now um, that I'm using. One of them is called Tanya Knows No Limit. The other one is Tanya's Primetime TV slash media reviews so make sure you subscribe to both of those channels so you can make sure you always catch me live but anywho um on the other side of town quincy's mom is outside the courthouse with her lawyer and dre and it seemed like they you know have a long uh uphill battle because i guess the witnesses all the witnesses that um try to come forward you know in quincy's sake the judge wasn't letting none of them testify. He wasn't letting none of them testify. I don't know why. They really didn't go into details, but Dre, you know, she was up there on the straw. The lawyer, the attorney, he act like, you know, I, I'm sorry. We, we got to deal with this later. Let me, I got to take this phone call. You know, in another month, we'll do such and such. She's like in another month. I mean, keep in mind, her son has been in prison for a minute. He claims that he is innocent. Dre believes he is innocent. And of course, his mother, you know, she believes he's innocent. He didn't been in there. He didn't got beat up. He didn't had all kinds of things done to him. So Dre is really trying to get him out of prison. He already didn't uh, murder somebody, have somebody put down, you know, who was abusing the boy. So, you know, he's going to do everything he can. And he promises to Quincy's mom that Pretty soon, everybody in the city is going to know her son's name, and he will get justice. But when I tell y'all, this that white girl, Winner, the one who flew up in Dre's house, you know, uninvited, <laughs> just flew up in there talking about let's make music, when she was singing in the studio, I did not expect that. Did y'all expect that? I was like... <laughs> Who raised this my who raised this white girl? Was she raised in the hood? Because she had to listen to some Aretha Franklin, some I mean Patty LaBelle, some I mean she could sing. That white girl was blow in. I was like, this girl got some good old black throwback soulful music in her soul. I was like, yes, she sounded really good though, for real, for real. But anywho, Cookie, she was feeling it too. And all of, all of a sudden she saw like the stars, like immediately this girl is going to make us a star, but not so fast, Cookie. <laughs> not so fast, uh, Jamal. He was like, hold up, because that's his um, that's his artist. She signed to his label. Cookie was trying to get her to sign to their management company. And I guess she didn't realize that this girl has other options. Like Jamal might be, you know, the label that she signed to. But Jamal is he's getting to that point where he no longer wants Cookie and Lucius to, you know, make his steps for him. You know, he wants to make his own footprints in the world with his own label, his own company, his own artist. And that's what he was trying to tell Cookie. Like, uh, back off, mom, mom dukes. <laughs> back off. Y'all got, go find your own, go find your own. But anyway, um, I guess she just thought Jamal was going to hand winter to her on a platter. And what kind of manager really would do that, though? I mean, 
a label, they they going to shop. The, the, okay, this is what they're supposed to do. They should shop them around. <laughs> All artists should be shopped around. You just don't go with the first person or, you know, with being that this is family. Cookie, I'm sure, just thought, you know, this is my son. That's his artist. You know, she can sign to our management company. Hey, tiny girl, Jay. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> Thanks for tuning in on my live. I was just telling everybody, um, I have two, uh, I'm going live on Instagram and YouTube right now. So make sure you subscribe to my, uh, two YouTube channels. One of them is Tanya Knows No Limit. Go over there and subscribe. And the other one is Tanya's Primetime TV slash Media News. Make sure you go over there because I'm going to be uploading on both of my channels. But anywho, um, why do y'all really think that Jamal kept Cookie in the dark about his engagement to Kai? I think, this is just what I think, but I think it's because um, Cookie, she still seemed really concerned about Kai's HIV status. Um, I'm surprised she still was in those deep, you know, in one of those STD HIV books that she's been reading, you know, for the last few episodes, all on Google, you know, searching, uh, all about, you know, HIV, STDs, you know, how susceptible is it for people to get it, you know, when they're messing with somebody who, uh, counts are low or, you know, undetectable and all that. So I think that's probably the reason why he didn't tell her at first and he kind of left her out of the loop. But, um, I don't blame Cookie. I probably would have been that same mama up there trying to read all up on H HIV and STDs and all that kind of stuff. Hey, Maurice. <laughs> this, that white girl can sing. <laughs> yes, she was. I was shocked. I was really, really shocked. I was like, hold up. She's jamming. She's jamming. But yes, um, I wonder if she's really a real singer too. Because sometimes they do that. They put some real singers on that show. But uh, if she ain't, somebody needs to pick her up and put her on their label. Like for real, for real. <laughs> But anyway, um, Cookie, you know, she was still trying to be slick, you know, while she was up there cooking, cooking and everything. And she was still trying to get Jamal's, Jamal's artist. But then he came in there and he was like in the most respectful way. He told Mom Dukes, uh, stop treating me like a son. You always calling me boy. You always boy this, boy that. And Cookie do got that bad. She do got that bad. She be like, boy, if you don't stop, boy, you know. <laughs> so he's like, you know what? I'm a grown man. He's a full grown man. Quit calling me boy. Stop treating me like, you know, every decision got to be run through you. So anyway, that's when he also informed her of his engagement. And he's like, okay, I think he had to throw that in there at that time because he really wants her to give him a chance to be the man that he is supposed to be, you know, and who they, they raise all their kids really good. They put all that business sense in them, all that business knowledge and everything, you know, music, everything they know about music. So, you know what? He's going to be good and everything. She just has to give him a chance. But then when he was like, uh, by the way, I'm engaged, Cookie was like, what? Everybody else knew but me. <laughs> Everybody else knew but her. But anyway, she didn't act um, as upset as we might have thought she would act. But, you know, it was quite different. And I think what happened was Lucius, almost every episode, he had been talking to her, telling her, you know, he's grown. He's a man. He can, he, you know, he knows what he's doing. He knows how to be safe. Kai survived out there when he was kidnapped. So, you know, they both grown. They can make their own decisions. If he want to be with a man who is, <laughs> you know what I mean, HIV positive, that's him. That's his life. That's his life. We just got to pray about it and hope for the best. But anyway, um, from the moment when Dre first met Quincy's mom, I can't remember her name. That's why I keep saying Quincy's mom. But, um, and I don't know why this signal output is really low on YouTube, but I hope you guys can hear me okay. Um, I'll have to check into that later. But anyway, for the meantime, um, I am live on Instagram if you want to check me out over there if you can't see me too well on YouTube. But, uh, after, um, Dre first, you know, met her at the prison, I just knew something was going to pop off. 
it was just like some sparks there, some connection there. So I wasn't shocked when he had came to her house, you know, when they was looking over pictures and everything and trying to find the best photo that they could use for the public, you know, and in social media to represent her son. She wanted the perfect photo so nobody would just think that he's just some regular old kid or some thug or, you know, some hood gangster or something like that since he's in prison you know, pleading innocent. So anyway, they started kissing and I was like, whoo-wee, <laughs> that kiss was hot. I felt that all the way over here. I was like, whoo-wee. <laughs> but anyway, I was like, man, I knew they was going to hook up. I just knew it. I was just wondering when they was going to hook up. I kind of thought it might be after Quincy had got out of prison. But anywho, um, do y'all think that's a good thing for them hooking up? Do you think that might be a mistake for him hooking up with Quincy's mom? Um, Quincy is, he's, he's a grown man, but he's kind of young. And Jamal was in prison for murder. He also, I mean, not Jamal, Dre was in prison for murder. He also murdered somebody in prison. Granted, he did it because of Quincy to keep him safe. But I don't know how, I don't know how Quincy might feel about this to find out that Dre and his mom is knocking boots. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, they finally hooked up and I knew uh, Dre, it had been like almost three years that he was in prison, that he was locked up from the day he got arrested. So I know that girl was about to get some work. <laughs> he was about to get some work. I'm sure he had all kind of tension, all kind of build up in him <laughs> from over the last three years. But anyway, um, when she uh, found out about the witnesses, you know, she was pretty distraught about that and they end up hooking up. But then, you know, afterwards, when they met, uh, Again, she was like, I'm sorry, you know, we probably shouldn't have done what we did the other day. And he he understood. He understood where she was coming from. She basically wants to keep her focus, no matter how much she, uh, how many feelings she has for him or if she's falling in love with him or whatnot. She still is like, until my son gets out of prison, I just can't focus on no relationship right now. And... Like I said, I, I get it. I understand. He understands. So I think, I think right there was the moment when Dre was like, uh, okay, I'm about to see about this. Shoot, I put in work over here. And in order for me to put in some more work over here, I'm going to have to do something to get her son out of prison. <laughs> So that's when he went to visit, you know, the guy in prison and he told him, you know what, I need a huge favor, but he told him, you know what, I'll make it all worth your while. I don't know what he did to make it all worth his while, but in the end, she had got a phone call saying her son was going to be released immediately, expeditiously. <laughs> and Dre up there played it off. He was like, oh, Really? I mean, really? He was sitting there like he didn't have nothing to do with it. But we could tell when he was hugging her, the way he was looking, you know, when he was had his face behind her head. You could tell how he was looking like, uh-huh, yeah, I, I made it happen again. He made it happen again. But anyway, um, now let's get to the juicy stuff. Uh, when cooking. My, my, my cookie. When Cookie and her sister noticed that Candace, um, their other sister, Candace, had bruises on her wrist, uh, they questioned her about it. Um, but she shut them down, basically telling them, you know, it's nothing to worry about, but they could see right through her. They didn't know what exactly was going on or why it was going on, but they could see right through her and knew she was lying. So they went over her house, um, uninvited to be nosy, but she caught them, you know, when they was coming in and she was like, what the heck y'all doing here? And when they told her, you know what, we, we, we wondering about you, you know, the bruises, you know, whatever, 
he basically shut them down. Y'all need to get out of my house, mind your own business, stay out of mine. That's basically what she was telling them. And she like went off. <laughs> she went off on them like, don't worry about me. Worry about y'all. Shoot, I'm handling this over here. Ain't nothing happening to me. I'm fine. I'm cool. But then later when uh her husband, well, they're getting divorced, but he's still her husband. When he had came over there, to Cookie's house because um I guess she changed the locks on him so she couldn't get in the door. He was like, um, my key ain't working, so I need a key, you know, to get my stuff out the house. And she asked her son um to give the to give the dad the key, her husband the key. And he was like he didn't want to. They looked like I was like this this why I said man this this show tricked me several times because first of all I don't know what y'all thought but first of all when I seen that when I seen that scene I was like uh oh okay maybe it is the husband you know although I'm looking at the husband like this little dude I know she ain't over there getting whooped on by this little dude. Her and her son both can take him. I know she ain't getting whooped on by this little man. <laughs> and so, but her son and her, they looked like terrified. He was like, I don't want him to go. He in the house. We got to go home. You know, our things are there. And I'm like, okay, maybe it is this little dude, you know, that's beating up on her. But anyway, um... They had left because she was like, no, we got to go. Cookie and their other sister, I can't remember the other sister's name right now, but they was like, um, something ain't right. I think we should go be Inspector Gadget and we need to go back over there and find out what's going on. And so they went back over there, uninvited again to check things out. And that's when they heard Candace screaming. And when they rushed, mm -mm -mm. when they rushed in to help Candace, I'm telling y'all, I was almost dead on the flow. I was almost on the flow, just like Candace was. I was like, no, that ain't her son up there kicking her all up in and through her ribs like that. I mean, he was kicking the holy crap out of his mama, out of Candace, and she's just down there screaming, oh, oh, oh. and I'm like, what the, uh-uh, the son? Where's the husband? Like, where's the husband? Because they all like, Went home almost around the same time. So I'm like, where's the husband? I don't know where the heck he was. The boy probably done tied him up somewhere, put some duct tape on his mouth and put him in the back of the closet. But anyway, he was up there stomping and kicking her. And then when they was trying to get him out, he was choking her. And I was like, oh my God, I cannot believe her son is doing all this. And then Cookie, you know, she managed to, she swung on him really hard. She went way back. Bust him dead in his face. <laughs> and didn't do nothing. He looked at Cookie. <laughs> like, what was that? Like, what was that, sis? Man, he must have knocked her out. Like, <laughs> he gave her a Mike Tyson punch. He knocked Cookie all the way out. Her, she was like, whoa, right down on the floor. And then the other sister, she tried to help. He picked her up like a rag doll, threw her across the room. I'm like, oh, my God. I cannot believe. It was the son. I could not believe it was the son because he was acting so freaking scared and terrified. So I'm like, what do y'all think that was all about? What do y'all think that was all about? Like, why was the son and her acting so scared? I don't, I don't know. To me, it seemed like they were scared. Like they was, I don't know. Y'all let me know what y'all think because I'm like, if they was acting, she, he's the one beating her butt. So why wasn't she acting like that when she was, I don't know. She was around her son like he was the best, you know, best son on earth. You know, the best son in the whole wide world. He was helping Cookie now with the computers. When Cookie lost all her subscribers, you know, on the laptop. And I guess he's a techie. He's real smart. He's geeky, you know, whatever. And I'm like, oh, this this little boy, he's cool. He's really smart and all that kind of stuff. And then this, I'm telling you, I was on the flow. But anyway, um, Candace, when she was telling Cookie, like, okay, when Cookie was on the floor, she managed to grab her phone and call the cops. The other sisters, they managed to go into the bathroom. Was that a bathroom? I think they were in the bathroom and they managed to lock the door. 
while Cookie was on the floor calling the cops, he had picked up a, a lamp, the bottom of a lamp or something, and he was banging it on the door and trying to bust the door down. And when he came back, like, in her direction, she was like, please put that down, put that down, I called the cops. When the cops got there, Candace, like, flipped out on Cookie. And I'm like, if that ain't... If that ain't, you know, okay, you know, when women get hit, I don't think this only applies to uh, your husband, your boyfriend, your, you know, significant other. I think it could apply in this situation with a child, you know, the battered woman syndrome. It was like she, she was trying to protect him as much as possible from even before, you know, they had got over to the house and before they found out, you know, he was the one abusing her and everything at Cookie's house. She was trying to protect him. When the cops was there, she was still trying to protect him. When they used the uh, taser, the stun gun or whatever on him, she was trying to protect him. She flipped out on Cookie. Like, you're not my sister no more. How could you call the cops? They could have killed my child. She's trying to protect him. And I'm like, but who the heck is going to protect you? I mean, even if he is mentally, like she said, he's having mental issues right now. People like that with mental issues like that do not belong in, do not belong in a home. No, they do not. What if you have other kids in the house? Because this is real life. This stuff happens in real life. Like, there are really parents out there who are terrified of their children. Terrified. Like, they get, they go home and get beat up on, don't cook your child wrong, don't give them some money, don't let them stay up all night, try to ground them. They will whoop their butt. It, this really happens. I couldn't do it, though. I couldn't do it. I don't care. I We, we probably would have scrapped one time, one good time. He might have knocked me out, but I would have kept on coming back. But we... <laughs> It would have took one time of scrapping, and that would have been it, because ain't no child of mine, mental, crazy, whatever, um, schizo, whatever, gonna be in the house beating my butt, and then I got other kids in the house, too, so I think the best way for her to protect him is to get him help and quit trying to cover it up. He might have to go somewhere. He might have to go get counseling, you know, get treatment, you know, stuff like that. But one thing I did get was the fact how she was um, scared that the cops might do something, you know, to her son. Um, if her son, okay, we see it all the time, uh, mothers. Me, personally, the first time my son got pulled over by a cop because he ran through a red, a uh, yellow light, they was like he had enough time to stop. You know, you know, cops are iffy. Some might pull you over from going through a yellow night. Some might not. But anyway, I was terrified after the fact, like, you got pulled over? Oh, my God, what happened? I mean, black women just have that fear. Black mothers have that fear. Um, oh, hey, Carolina girl, 67. We just going over a review of uh, Empire, the last episode that came on last night. Um, there was a scene when uh, Cookie's sister Candace, she was getting abused, like really abused, like messed up, beat down, kicked, stomped, choked, everything by her son who has mental issues. And she was trying to protect him from going to jail from the police. But um, I was just saying... If you are watching and you got a child like that at your house, the best way for you to protect them is to get them help because they come across somebody else like that and they might put a bullet in their head. The cop, he lucky the cop didn't put a bullet in them because they all was beat up cookie. Her, it looked like he broke her jaw. Um, The mom, Candace, she had bruises all over her face. And the other sister, she was banged up. So they lucky they didn't put a bullet in him, really, for real. This might be a TV show, but y'all, this stuff happens in real life. But anywho, um, I can't wait till the next episode. I cannot wait till the next episode. But then, um, <clears throat> oh yeah, I already asked y'all about that, about why y'all thought Candace and her husband, I mean, Candace and her son was looking really scared. <clears throat> oh, you said, okay, I'm out of town. I have not seen the episode yet, so I'm listening. <laughs> All right. But, oh, let me, oh, so you haven't watched this. Okay, so we about to get some spoilers now. You, it, We about to get some spoilers, Carolina. <laughs> oh, 
um Lucius. Okay, I was like really surprised um that Lucius didn't flip out on Jeff when he, you know, af even after he kept turning down the songs that they kept presenting him, you know, when Giselle was working with the ladies of TBT, after he agreed to let Lucius work with him and the song they did was amazing like amazing like they sound like a real life for real girl group you know with tisha campbell and the other two ladies and he was like nope sorry that song don't work <laughs> don't like the sound i'm surprised lucius did not flip out on him i think lucius after him getting messed up and losing his legs and in a coma and i don't know i don't know i think lucius got soft but anywho um he kept making excuses for why the songs don't work and forcing Lucius and the ladies to keep revamping and redoing the songs, um, basically playing with their emotions. Uh, it seems to me like Jeff was really like, you know, toying with them, you know, like he had them on strings, like he's a puppet master and like, nope, nope. Just got him running around circles, just running around in circles, trying to please the master. But anyway, um, when Lucius decided to take the high road and invite him over for dinner, Cookie made a really, really, really scrumptious meal. She put her foot in that meal. Um, through the entire evening, the same look that he gave Lucius, you know, back at uh the uh back at Empire. Um, he kept looking at him like that. He kept mugging him and staring at him like he wanted to kill him, like he could not stan lucius like he was disgusted with lucius um and then when he brought up the fact of uh, lucius he was like i used to hear that i heard that you used to be a drug dealer and that you used to deal drugs back in the day and lucius was like yeah you know that's that's old you know that's you no know, that's the past um he started questioning his morality like, how do you feel about that? You probably, you know, put a lot of people's lives in danger. You probably, you know, he was going on and on, you know, talking about what Lucius used to do. And was it Jamal? I think it was Jamal who was like, hold up, man, hold up, man, watch it, watch it. <laughs> Lucius was like, no, no, it's cool. But he told him, he said, regardless of how many lives that he might have damaged or ruined, I was a single dad. Cookie was in jail. Cookie was in prison then. He said, I was raising three kids. I did what I had to do. So, you know, whatever happened, it is what it is. That's the past, you know, moving on. He said, I make no apologies about it. Jeff was looking at him with so much hate and disgust. That's why I was like, through this whole episode, like, Lucia's got to be getting soft. Because this man looking at him like, the whole time, okay, let me try to get this look right. He was like, Did I get the look right? <laughs> Did I get the look right? He was just staring at him like... I'm like, okay, Lucius, you do not see this guy really has a problem with you. It's not about the music anymore. It has nothing to do with the music. It don't have nothing to do with TBD or how many good songs they throw out there. Um, He was like, really got serious real life beef with Lucius. But anyway, um, he told him. He was like, you know what? After that dinner, or after, you know, that was dinner. He said, after that dinner, he took him into the studio. He was um, playing on his guitar. Jamal was singing. Uh, Hakeem was rapping. He was like, this is what came about from all that work that I put in in the streets. And Jeff was still looking at him like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> I see you, Lucius. I see you. But after he left, baby. When I tell y'all, I had to flow again. I had to flow twice this episode. <laughs> like, knock me over. I was dead. When he went into that room where his mother was, I can't remember if it was a hospital or a nursing home. But anyway, it looks like his mother was laying on her sick bed, her death bed. I don't know if she was in a coma or just sleeping or whatever. But anywho, when he finally showed what was on the other half of that picture that he's been carrying around all season, one half has his mother, this white lady, and the other half of the picture, when he opened it up, it had Lucius, young Lucius on there, young Lucius, uh, drug dealing Lucius, back, the dude from the projects, <laughs> young Lucius, was in the picture with his mom and they were holding hands. And that's when it like, oh my God, don't tell me, don't tell me, 
Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. He was talking to his mom like, yeah, mom, he don't even know. He don't have no idea. I'm about to ruin him. I'm about to wipe him from the face of the earth. And he was like, so what you think about that, dad? Because he was talking to himself. He was like, dad. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't believe. I mean, there was rumors out before that Lucius had other children. But I would have never thunk. <laughs> I would have never thunk that it was Jeff. But then right after that, you know, my next thought was, what did Lucius do? Because... Okay, even if Lucius is his father, did he give his mother drugs? Is that why she's in the hospital? Did he get her hooked on drugs and strung out? And was she a street woman? Was she a prostitute? I mean, did, did she go down this horrible road? Did he get put up for adoption? I mean, it didn't get into any of that. He's very, very angry. I don't know if his mom... Um, if they struggled all their life because Lucius wasn't around. I don't know if Lucius knocked her up and was like, that ain't my baby. You know how dudes are. Some dudes, not all dudes, but about to knock the computer down. But that ain't my baby. You know, and make you take care of your child by yourself. I don't know. We don't know. But I'm sure we're going to find out in the next episode. But I was gagging. My jaw hit the flow. Like, Lucius, this show. Oh, and I can't wait till Cookie find out. Lord, I can't wait to cookie find out. But anyway, looks like Jamal and Hakeem and Dre <laughs> got another brother. <laughs> but anyway, um, now, now that we didn't got through that review, again, who do y'all think is in the casket? Because I'm sure some of y'all changed y'all minds and y'all probably chose somebody else to put in that pretty casket. Um, I still think it could possibly be Jeff. I heard somebody, what did somebody else say? Oh yeah, somebody said, of course, it might be Jeff's mom, because since it looks like she's on her deathbed, sick bed, or whatnot, um, I don't know. What do y'all think? Let me know what y'all think. Put it in the chat. Hit me up in the chat. Let me know, you know, what you think about it, and, uh, we shall see. I'm gonna take a poll. I don't know by next uh, week if they'll show us, you know, who's in that casket. Because we only got, like, one or two episodes left. So, you know, let me know what you think. Put it in the chat. Put it in the comment section. And we'll discuss it. <laughs> but anyway, thanks, you guys, for tuning in tonight. Again, you guys, make sure you share the video. Because my other uh, YouTube channel, Tanya's Primetime TV, I can only upload videos on there for some technical reason. Um, I can't go live over there. So that's why I'm going live on my other channel, which is Tanya Knows No Limit. So basically, y'all will be good if y'all subscribe. Make sure y'all subscribe to both of them. Make sure you subscribe to Tanya Knows No Limit. And make sure you are subscribed to my Tanya's Primetime TV slash media reviews. But anyway, yes, uh, Carolina, I can't wait either um, to the next episode. You said you want to watch that replay? Yes, please do. Because um, I know in my reviews, I tend to get a little detail. Um, a lot of my followers like that because a lot of them don't have time to watch all these TV shows because they work. They got kids, two, three jobs. So they like to just, you know, watch me talk and listen to my reviews and, you know, I, I feel that. I feel that. I try. <laughs> I try my best to keep you guys entertained while I'm doing my reviews. But anyway, um, make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channels, both of them. And make sure you share. Please share the video. And in the meantime and in between time, Primetime Squad, y'all know how we do. Stay safe. Be blessed. And I'm out.